Hey, it's Josh, and we are going to learn the Wedding DJ Success System. And again, the primary objective of this course is to give you the tools you need to get up and create a wedding DJ business that fascinates your guests and leaves them like they've experienced the best wedding that they've been to in a long time. Well, really, any event that you DJ, these tools are going to work beyond the wedding industry if you're going to be a DJ for other types of events where you're a mobile DJ being hired to you know, set up your equipment and create an experience, create an environment for people with music. And we're going to do this by learning the full system, which you're then going to use over and over and over again. And I think about systems a lot. Business systems in particular fascinate me. And the wedding DJ system is one that is really easy to learn. It's really easy to replicate and then turn it into a money printing machine. And that's kind of a cliche phrase. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but I love it. A money printing machine. Imagine that. If you Imagine if you had a machine that could print money. You'd really want to know where you could find it, right? And it really is business systems. You look at business systems and they are not physical machines that make money, but uh, they are systems that in the end of going through all the different processes result in a paycheck, result in a payday that puts real money in your account. And this isn't just some hack that, you know, I'm, I'm going to teach you that you're ripping people off. No, 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 no. We are going to give people incredible service. We're going to give people the best customer experience and really the best entertainment and environment that you can possibly create. And that is worth money. And that's why people pay a lot of money for this, because it's really hard to come by a person who cares. And that's something I want you to think a lot about is how can you care more for the people that you serve? Because that really is a core principle. It's this deep thing that I can't do it for you. You have to be thinking about other people, be thinking about their needs, be thinking about their different personalities and their different events and parsing that separately from your own preferences. Sometimes I have to put my preferences onto the back seat, into the back seat and kind of like tuck them in because it's like, all right, my preferences are going to come along to the gig, but sometimes they don't get to drive. And sometimes they don't get to make decisions, and that's okay. You can still have your own preferences. They're not at jeopardy just because the client wants something different. But I want to get you to the finish line fast. I want you to DJ real events, real weddings, real events as fast as possible. But something that I don't want to happen is I don't want to sacrifice quality. I don't want to... Uh, I don't want you just to rush out there and go get your first wedding and feel like you know everything to do at that first wedding and feel like, though, um, that you failed because you missed something along the way. So getting you there fast is important, but going through this course and actually testing these things out is even more important. And when people think about fast, everybody has a different opinion on the timeline of what speed really is. When I talk about fast, I mean within six months to a year, you can really have an amazing business. I would even say maybe four months as a potential even shorter term just to test out some different events. It really depends on what your area is and what your style is of communication and, and how many people are in your network and how many people are in your, your circle of friends and everything. But that really is your network and your contacts are a big piece of this. And if you're thinking, I roll, I, of course I know that. Of course I, I have contacts. But really think about this strategically. Think about the people that know other people. You don't need to know all the people. You need to know one or two people in your you know, friend of a friend network who knows a ton of people and see if you can grab a meeting with them, see if you can talk to them on the phone and then figure out who in their circle is is hosting some kind of event that you can provide music for. And you do that within a month, you do that within two months, then you're you're taking the steps to be able to uh, DJ a wedding and that's where the cash, that's where the payday really comes in is when you are in the wedding business itself. Now, a big mantra that we are going to repeat throughout this course is that a strong system equals a successful business. The strength of your system is directly correlated to the success of your business. In other words, you want to do everything you can to build the system up front, to make sure that you have all the pieces in place up front so that then you're set up for success, not failure. If you have a really weak system, it's going to be hard to see the success in your business and in your life that you want to see. But if your system is strong and you know the process and you trust the strategy, well, then it's just about doing it enough times that you're comfortable. Then it's about failing a few times. You know, there, there are going to be times that you fail. There are going to be little tiny things here and there that you're like, oh, I wish I could have done that better. And I'm not saying you're going to fall flat on your face, although you might. I'm, I'm not up to that. I mean, that's ultimately on you. But 
if you have a strong system, you're going to know where the weak points are in your setup even before you arrive. You're going to know where the key pressure points are to test so that the event is successful, so that you have communicated all of the different things that a lot of times cause bottlenecks. And if you, you know, if you drop the ball a few times or if, if you see these things go wrong, you're going to know immediately where you need to tighten it up for the next gig that you do. And that's what I love about this business is just because something goes wrong at one event doesn't mean that you are out of the business and that you're, you are a failure for life. It just means that you need to tighten up that specific part of the system. And that's the beauty of the system. I love talking about systems because they give you a path to figure things out for yourself, to kind of audit yourself. And when you're wondering, hey, how come that event didn't go so well? You can then look at, okay, wow, in the communication stage, I never realized that we would need to have this much power. I didn't realize that they were going to be running coffee machines on the same circuit as the DJ thing, and that's why it shorted out, and that's why it didn't work. So that is what this system provides, and in general, that is what systems do. If you think about the human body system, there's the nervous system, the circulatory system, the digestive system, the immune system, the muscular system, and each of these systems, when you go to a doctor, there are doctors that specialize in each of these different areas. And likewise, there are people in business that specialize in invoicing, that specialize in in uh maintaining equipment and repairing equipment. But as a business owner, you have the bird's eye view of looking at all of the different systems in a business and figuring out how to make them all run in sync together. And that's how the human body is, right? Because we have all these systems within our body, the nervous, the, uh, the, the circulatory, the digestive, and all of them are working together. But when we, uh, and, and we exist as this whole unit, and that's exactly how a business exists as well, as the components, the sum of all its parts. And they really don't work without each other. You can't really eliminate the digestive system without the muscular system uh, having some kind of pain. And and same in business. If you get rid of accounting and you get rid of all the financial piece of it, you really start to have trouble with being able to repair the, the equipment and being able to execute things over and over again. So that is why systems are so important, and that's why I'm so uh, adamant on having a whole lesson just on the success system itself because what the reason that you need to know about systems and the reason that you I, I really want you to be thinking about business systems in general for the DJ practice is that you can get easily overwhelmed and confused and feeling like things are complex without it. So having a system is your roadmap. It is your ability. It's kind of this GPS that allows you to, to, to tell you where you need to go. Without a system, it's really easy to feel the stress. It's easy to feel like you're lost or that you don't know where to go. And imagine if you had a GPS, but you didn't move forward, that you didn't take the steps forward or, or didn't press down the gas pedal and take the turns that the GPS was taking you to turn. That's very similar to this course because I can give you the guide. I can give you the directions of where you need to go, but you actually have to put your foot on the gas, turn the steering wheel, and take yourself to the place that you want to go. So the system is great, but it only works with action. And we've talked about that a little bit. I really want to see you take action on all of this stuff. But a system also allows for success on repeat. We want to see success happen not one time, but over and over again. And when you have a success mindset, when you are driven by wanting to do your best and wanting to see an event that is successful, everything changes. Now, when you're focused on failure and you're focused on paranoia and things going wrong, it's very easy then to start seeing that stuff come to life. But when you can see yourself having an amazing end of the night and you get and, and all the guests have enjoyed themselves, you feel like you've done a good job and that is in your mind. That is what success looks like. You're really positioned for, uh, for a success mindset that's going to allow you to do that over and over again. And the book Mindset, it's an amazing book if you haven't read it, talks about these two kinds of mindsets that we can have. We can have a growth mindset or we can have this failure mindset. And the growth mindset is the mindset of success. The growth mindset is just because things went wrong, that doesn't mean that you're a failure. That doesn't mean that you can't ever do this again. That doesn't mean that, you know, that, that just because one venue d didn't like how things happened, that doesn't mean that you can't ever DJ again at a different venue. So having a growth mindset means that you're going to be looking for opportunities and you're going to be looking for ways to collaborate with people and communicate with them in such a way that uh, everybody is winning, that everybody is feeling like they're, they're doing well. So I want you to think about what does success look like? And this is a great question for life. What does success look like? 
Success in business doesn't just mean showing up and having great dancing. Success might look like this one wedding I did a few years ago with my wife, where we imagined that there were going to be a bunch of people on the dance floor. We imagined that there was going to be, you know, lots of different partying and people just having a great time. And we went and we set up the equipment. We went and set up the lights and we were so excited. We were imagining everybody out there on the dance floor dancing. But for this particular event, success looked like everybody sitting at their tables and talking to each other. Now, if you are a big entertainer and you love pumping up the crowd and you love people on the dance floor, that is awesome. But like we said a few minutes ago, sometimes you have to take your preferences and tuck them in the back seat because they're not in the driver's seat because the client and the event and the personalities that are there need to drive the way that things are going to go. Now, I'm not telling you that this event was a failure. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, that's Josh just because you um, you didn't know how to get them up and dancing. No, no, no. I got them up and dancing. We danced for as long as they wanted to dance for. But what I realized in this wedding pretty quickly was that these guests had not seen each other for months, maybe even years. And they wanted time really to see the bride and the groom, to talk to them, to take pictures with them, and to not just talk to them for a quick moment, but to actually sit down with them and enjoy a conversation. It was a smaller wedding, and I was imagining everybody dancing and everybody having a good time, and I thought that that was what success was going to look like. But I realized in that moment that success always doesn't look the way that I have it in my head. It looks the way that the client wants it to look. And success for this client was a more laid back wedding, a wedding that they could dance a little bit, that the music was setting a great vibe for them, that they felt like they were at this party, but that success for them was being able to enjoy themselves and being able to enjoy their guests. And if I would have been on the microphone and playing really, really loud music so that people couldn't talk, it would have been a failure on their end, even though I felt like I was doing my best. So sometimes you you want to make your success measures or the way that you evaluate your success, not just based on what you want out of an event, but what the client wants. And everybody wants something different. Now, you'll find that a lot of people at weddings really do want a lot of dancing. And we can make that happen. And you can learn how to make the dance floor jump and and get them all excited and have an incredible time by the end of the night. But sometimes success doesn't look like dancing. Sometimes success looks like people enjoying themselves and being able to evaluate yourself on uh, different success measures is going to allow you to have that success and growth mindset where you don't feel like you're a failure just because people didn't dance. But again, you can get people dancing. And I and I'm not saying that I didn't get people dancing at that wedding. But it's just something to be thinking about. How can you have different success measures so that uh, every event is successful because you know what the client wanted and you know that you could deliver it? So successful business owners know that in order for a business to grow, in order for it to be profitable, it needs to be scalable. And that word scalable is really popular in business communication because scaling means how big can this get? Can I sell this thing to an investor and cash out and make a lot of money? And to be honest, unless you want to grow a DJ empire with a ton of people working under you, um, you could. You could totally turn this into a thing where you pump out a ton of DJs that go out and they DJ all the time. Or you could turn this into your own personal practice where you are the primary performer and you're the primary bookkeeper and you're the one that's making all of it happen. So it's it's a really scalable business in that you can take on as many gigs as you would like, but you could also replicate this process and get a bunch of DJs following the success system as well and implementing all these different things and having somebody taking care of accounting and somebody taking care of marketing. But if you're in this alone or if you're just starting off, it's really wise to just start doing stuff yourself, to just start scaling yourself. You might start off with five or 10 weddings a year. And in the next year, you might go up to 15, maybe 20. And if you want it to go up to eventually 60 weddings in a year, you could make that happen. And that's one of those success measures. And this is what scaling is all about. I don't think you can get to 60 weddings a year without having a system and without having this repeatable process and having all of the different things set up in order to make those 60 weddings happen really, really well. And then all of those weddings have people recommend you to even more. So the things that we're going over and the things that we're going to be continuing to talk about through the remainder of this course I didn't invent any of this stuff. I am simply identifying the things that I have done that contribute to success, but that I also know other business owners implement and that I know other DJs implement in order for them to see success. So here are the eight parts of the system. 
First, it's to internalize the system mindset. It is to have a growth mindset, is to really see this thing as a whole and not just um, lot and not just extra stuff that are on the side when you're not behind the mixing board. Number two is to play the guide in the couple's journey. When you play the guide, you are positioned as somebody there to help, somebody there to serve, somebody there that they are then going to want to recommend to their friends and tell their neighbors about because you did such a phenomenal job. So play the guide in the couple's journey is number two. Number three is to master the wedding day timeline. And the timeline is the concise document that lets you know everything you need to know to do for the day. It gives you the perspective from the other vendors and what the bride and groom are doing or what the couple is doing and all of the different names that are going to be included for introductions. All of that stuff is going to be included in the wedding timeline. And not just that, but also what happens when you wake up on wedding day? What happens when you go to sleep on wedding day? And seeing the day really as a whole, we will talk about in the wedding day timeline lesson. Number four is to vow the DJ commitments. Every DJ is committed to something, or maybe they're unconsciously committed to some things, but we're going to go over the very specific things that I want you to commit to if you're going to be in this business. And these are things that sometimes happen behind the scenes. A lot of DJs are always in front of the scenes because they're making music happen. They're on the microphone. People are seeing them. It's a very exciting profession. But there are things that you're going to have to do behind the scenes, and you're going to have to vow these things to yourself and be comfortable doing this work if you are going to make this happen as a business for yourself. Number five is to become excellent with any equipment. And it's really important, and it's intentional that this equipment lesson comes a little bit later because I'm not just concerned about you uh, having the best equipment in the world or having the most um, precise equipment that I tell you exactly what to buy, but really learning how to master equipment, no matter what equipment you have, so that no matter where you are, or even if it's 10 years from now, you still have this mindset of knowing how to master and become excellent with equipment. Number six is to manage the business. And the business are all of those things that sometimes people sigh over because they don't want to be thinking about all the little tiny details that they need to do. They just want to be playing music and enjoying themselves. But no, The business side of it is easier than you think, and there are tools that are ready to go. It has never been an easier time in human history to be able to run a business yourself because of all the tools that are at our disposal, and many of them are free. So I'm going to teach you where they are. I'm going to teach you the, the doors to knock on, the people to talk to, and having a business and actually knowing all these parts of the business are going to give you a leg up on the other guy who's just DJing for fun. Number seven is to learn marketing and sales. I've done a lot of freelance work with marketing companies and have been pretty successful in getting other people to buy and sell products really well. So we're going to dive into marketing. We're going to dive into how to position yourself, how to be very clear in your messaging, how to make sure that you can persuade somebody when it comes time to close the sale, specifically how to make that happen within the wedding business so that you can have that mindset of what do I even need to say? Because sometimes when you don't know what to say, you will overcompensate and you'll say too much and people will assume that uh, they just shouldn't hire you because it sounds like you you know everything. So marketing and sales is very important and we're going to go on that in lesson seven. And then number eight, the last one, is to stay resilient. And resilience is this idea that you are going to stay in the game and that you're going to be healthy and that you're going to feel um, clear, that you're going to feel energized, that you're going to be excited to go to work, that you're going to be excited to talk to clients and make all of these things happen. And resilience is not easy. There are daily practices and monthly practices and yearly things that you'll need to do in order to stay resilient, in order to stay in the game. And that is what lesson eight is going to be all about. But to conclude, you know, we have a few more minutes in this lesson. This is kind of the last section that we're heading into here. I want to introduce to you this idea of HOCs and LOCs, H-O-C and L-O-C, higher order concerns and lower order concerns. And this is another mindset thing because I really believe that mindset is so important for any business, for any endeavor that you're doing, specifically in the wedding DJ business. You need to have the right mindset of what 
uh, is going on and, and how to frame yourself and the work that you do within that larger picture. So the Hawks and Locks approach is something that I learned from Harvey Lillywhite, who wrote a great book called Mastering Workplace Writing with his colleague, Kevin Dungy. And I happen to work with these guys as a, uh, as a writer and as a marketer with these guys, and they are incredible people. But they are both writing professors. They work with NASA. They have worked with GAO. They've worked with KPMG, all these really high-profile names to help people make their writing clear. But what I learned in working with them and even going to some of their classes and, and helping them make things happen is that it's not just about writing. It's about thinking. And the thinking process that they develop and that they teach really high-profile people is this higher order concern thinking and this lower order concern thinking. And if you're like, what the heck does writing even have to do with DJing? Oh my goodness, a lot. This is going to help your writing. If you're a bad writer, I'm about to change your life because writing isn't really about grammar. Really, it's about the content. Really, it's about the main idea. And that's what Hawks and Locks is about. The higher order concerns in, in the field of writing are content, organization, and design. And the lower order concerns are uh, paragraphs, word choice, and mechanics. And all of those things, a lot of writing teachers, that's why all of us hate writing a lot of times is because it's like, I don't want to worry about different words and commas and how to write a paragraph and all that stuff. But that's why writing sucks is because that's where all the teachers spent their time. So these guys reinvented writing, I think, and they teach people how to focus on the main idea. And that's like, oh, well, duh. Well, yeah, but Nobody ever teaches that. Nobody ever teaches you focus on the main idea. Really figure out, though, that the main idea is the main idea. Sometimes we think we know what the main idea is, but some, but the, but then we realize that the person that we're writing to or the, per, or the purpose that we're serving is a little different than we first thought. And then all the work that you did is useless. So this applies to the wedding DJ business in this way. Content in the case of the wedding is the couple's journey. In the case of the wedding, every client, every couple is getting married. It's a very important time in their life. It might be the only one time that they get married, hopefully, um, but you play a role in that journey. And by positioning yourself as a guide in that journey, you are allowing yourself to live in their life in a way that makes sense. And so many DJs, so many other people, a lot of vendors even act this way, where they are the experts, it's their business, it's their preferences, it's their priorities. And to be honest, I talk to these brides and grooms, they get stressed out. They get overwhelmed when the big picture to them is is so small to the vendor because the vendor is just concerned about getting paid, they're concerned about all the little tiny details. Here's the secret. In the case of a wedding and in the case of people getting married in their journey, it is all about their marriage. It's all about their lives. And it's not just wedding day, but it's this bigger idea that what they are going into is this exciting time in their lives. And you're playing a part of this pivotal moment that they go from being single to being together. And framing your work in that celebration, framing your work that you are getting prepared for this amazing party and that you are playing a role in this party in their lives is a better way to think about it. You're not just doing a job. You are playing a very important role in the history of their lives. I mean, they're going to tell a lot of family about this. They're going to be telling their children about this. And knowing that big picture allows you then to frame all your conversations, all your interactions, all of your emails and your text messages and the details that you need to make it happen. It allows you to frame it more appropriately because they are going to remember you. Whatever you do, however you talk, however you act, the couple is going to remember the interactions that you had with them. And you have an opportunity to really play a positive role, but really just to be there for them in a way that nobody else has. And one of the things that I just love about this business so much is that sometimes I get to sit across from people, look them in the eye, and realize that nobody else has really taken the time to get to know them. Nobody else has really taken the time to just hear them out and understand them. So I love talking about how did you guys get engaged how did you guys meet like when did you know you, you fell in love and like I know that I'm just the DJ but I love that stuff because it allows me to frame my work to frame what I'm doing and to make it feel like it's not just a job but that I'm helping real people that have real stories just like you and me and it makes the work more meaningful. It makes it more fun. So that is the higher order concern because that really is the most important thing at the end of the day. If we lose that, we lose a lot of uh, uh, what we're in this business for in the first place. And people are going to want to work with the people that feel like they know what the big picture is. So that is the highest order concern is the couple's journey. But then we'll get into the timeline and 
the DJ commitments, because these are the things where if you can't agree to this stuff, and if you feel like the the timeline and the DJ commitments aren't things that you're happy about, it's really, it doesn't matter what equipment you have. It really doesn't matter what business practices and what marketing you employ, because if you don't have these commitments set in stone, the other lower order concerns, it doesn't mean that they're less important, but it means that they're just not as, uh, uh, they won't take on the same power and they won't take on the same effectiveness if you are not sold out to the higher order concerns. And I love going into a wedding and always reminding myself what the higher order concerns are, that they are, I don't like to use the word priority because the word priority literally means first. And in order for something to be first, there can only be one. So we have used the word priority in a plural sense where we will talk about priorities. And I got this from Greg McEwen's book, Essentialism. But it's really not true that we can have priorities because you can only really have one thing that is first. And first and foremost, the priority is this idea of the couple's journey. So anyway, that's why I love the hot hawks and locks approach is because I like thinking about things in terms of what is the higher order concern? What, is, what should I be concerned about the highest up? And then what are the lower order concerns? What are the concerns that I um, still need to pay attention to? And that's the thing with this model is that these things, you still need to pay attention to them. If you let one of them go, the whole ship is going to sink. That's what Harvey likes to say a lot of times. Uh, Har- Harvey Lillywood, who wrote the book Mastering Workplace Writing, he says that if one of these goes out the window, I mean, if you have wonderful content and wonderful presentation, but you Um, miss all these words and commas, people just don't trust your writing. But when you bring all of it together, your writing becomes really, really, really good. And it's all about having that higher order concern in mind. And just imagine this, next time somebody emails you, next time somebody's talking to you about uh, your services and what you provide, try framing it through the Hawks and Locks approach, meaning start off with the content. What is this most important thing within the couple's journey? And then do your organization and, and, and put your stuff up front that what do they need to know first? For, what do they need to know first? Sometimes when we write, we always write what we want to write first. We write the first thing that comes to our mind. And it's a very writer-centric or, or, or uh, selfish point of view. And what I want you to do is I want you to become couple focused. I want you to be couple focused. Everything you do in the wedding industry, I want you focused on the couple and their guests. What do they need? What do they want? What are the feelings that they have? What are the concerns that they have? And how can you speak into that for the first thing that they need to know? This is the Hawks and Locks approach. And this is when I was taking this English class with Harvey Lillywood. I told him afterwards, I was like, I'm pretty sure you just changed the way I think about everything. Not just writing, but the way that I think about everything. Because when you walk into a wedding, if you are concerned about uh, yourself and about how you're feeling in that moment, you're missing it. And I'm not saying that your feelings are unimportant. You are going to have different kinds of feelings. I mean, I almost had a panic attack at one wedding, but I had to put it off to the side and focus on why am I here? What is this all about? And that, is, again, this is a part of the system. You have to put the couple's journey as the first and foremost thing, the highest concern of you in everything that you write and everything that you speak and everything that you perform. So that's the Hawks and Locks approach. Sorry I went on that tangent a little bit, but I really think it's going to be valuable to you for a thinking tool. And I love thinking tools because I think a lot about this stuff. And if you haven't, then I'll just do the thinking for you and I'll give you recommendations based on my experience. But I love to think about things and I love having a purpose. I love having a reason behind what I'm doing. And there are a lot of different benefits of being a DJ. There are a lot of different benefits and people talk about features and benefits. And I think the features are supposed to be the things that are kind of black and white that people really don't care about. But the benefits are the things that really make you feel something. And some evergreen benefits that I think about when it comes to this success system is that you're going to have the ability to fascinate people that you're going to have the ability to draw them in, to serve them. And having that ability, it's going to feel like you have superpowers when you do this because people want to be fascinated. Everybody out there at a wedding, at an event, even just at the supermarket, they're waiting to be blown away. And if they uh, if you don't believe that, then just try it. Try try to fascinate somebody. Try to go out of your way to make somebody's day, and you will find that people are consistently blown away with fascinating wow experiences. And being in the wedding DJ business and having a system that allows you to do so gives you the power to fascinate people, it gives you the power to really make a contribution to their life to make them feel like they have been seen and heard and understood. It allows you to serve people and to have a sense of purpose, 
a sense of meaning, a sense of importance. When you walk into a wedding and you're the DJ, you play an important role. And that's not to puff you up and, you know, let your chest stick out a little bit, but you play an important role and you get to do that for people on a really important day in their life. And having that sense of purpose and meaning walking into that, walking into that, it's, it's, it's not about you. It's about them. But you also get this added benefit of doing something meaningful with your time, doing something that is going to last, doing something that's going to be remembered and, and something that people are going to be talking about. So um, there are also some financial benefits when it comes to having this success system. And you're, you're probably thinking about the financial benefits just as much as you're thinking about some of the other things. This could eventually become your full-time income. If you want it to become your full-time income, I believe you can do it using these tools. This system could provide the money to fuel other passions or hobbies that you have. So maybe some things that you've been hoping to save up for, maybe you don't have to save up for it. Maybe you can create the money in order to buy those things. And this system can allow you to fulfill those dreams and ideas that you have. Or maybe you want to pay for your family needs. Maybe you have a kid in college. Maybe you are going to have a kid in college one day and you want to have some extra money on hand when that day comes. Or even just extra help with paying the bills and be, being able to eat out, having a wedding DJ business and a system that it's that it's actually a business and that it's actually repeating is going to allow you to do that on a regular basis and go on vacations and feel like that, you know, not this sense that you're going to be super, super rich and have all the money in the world, but that you have means in order to do the things that you'd like to do. And to me, that is my definition of rich. When I think about what it means to to be rich, and I know that that word is kind of a vague word, but rich to me is this deep sense that you have the ability and, and the freedom to do the things that you want to do. And money doesn't buy happiness but it sure can buy things and buy experiences that may contribute to your happiness. But the other personal benefits to think about in in executing the system is that you're going to meet a lot of people, going to be able to serve them well, be able to play music and get paid for it. And that's crazy to just like play songs for other people and get paid to do that. Uh, To be able to stay up to date with music that's coming out, you know, I sometimes fall off the wagon a little bit when I haven't done a gig in a while, and I feel like I've missed all the fancy music that people are into, and being a DJ and being in the industry means that you have to stay up with the the latest trends because people are going to be requesting it at the next event that you have. Uh, To get people dancing, to, to have them experience a sense of joy and celebration, and to surprise people by giving them world class service. That's what this system provides is that you're going to be able to delightfully surprise people and make them feel like they are are experiencing world-class service. So it's all about the couple and every couple has a problem. They need a guide. They need somebody to come along and just listen to them, to just try to understand them and what they're trying to do. And that is you. You can be there to help. And the e-myth principle from Michael Gerber, which we talked about a little bit in the introduction, is that every business needs to be able to scale. It needs to be able to franchise itself, but also that you're going to work on the business, not just in the business. So many people work in their business. They do the work. They, uh, they clock in. They clock out. And then they're done. But they don't take the time to work on their business, to work on the machine, to tune up the entire system, the entire process that's going to allow them to create the cash, the revenue, and the goals that they want to make. So here's your secret to wedding DJ success in the system is work on the business, not in the business. Meaning, work on all of these steps that we're going over in the wedding DJ success system and not just simply the dude who shows up and plays the music. You are a business owner if you're getting into this. You are a an entrepreneur. You are a person that is going to do this entire process, not just work in the process. And that change in mindset is really small, but it is really significant. And when you start thinking about how you can work on this entire business, how you can frame all of this stuff through the lens of the couple's journey, you will find success. And this success system is dependent on all of the different processes that we're talking about because you can't grow if you don't have marketing. You can't grow if you don't have a great product. So uh, I, I once heard that there are four P's in business. All right, I love this. The first P is people. You have to get the right people. 
and you have to know the people that you're serving. So this is both about you. Are you the right person for this job? But also, are you finding and serving the right customer? So the people problem is the first P of business. Number two is product. The actual thing that you're giving to the the person, the experience, the the feeling that they get when they are using your service and uh, and feeling like they have been heard, that they have been served, that they have been understood. So your product is actually being sure that what you're giving people is what they want and that they like it and that they're recommending it and that you're tweaking the product itself, which for you is a service. For, for the wedding DJ industry, it is, is providing a, an experience and the planning and all of all the stuff that goes into it is your product. And then next is the process. That's the system. That's what we're talking about right now. How you make all this stuff work. Do you have an onboarding process? How do you bring somebody into your business uh, if they want to, if you want to scale your business and, and you want to turn it into a, a multi operation, a multi op uh, DJ business? What's that process? What is the process of the timeline? What's the process of the contract? What's the process of planning? Blah, 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 blah. All of that is in the process phase. And then finally, and this is the one that everybody misses is position. What is your position in the market of all the other options that people have that they could hire? Why would they pick you? And the position piece of it is, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get to this. When we talk about marketing and we talk about your website and your brand and how to get sales, your position is so important. But here's your position. You're the guide. All the other DJs out there are talking about how many years of experience they've had and how great they are and all these wonderful things. People don't care about how great a DJ is. What they care about is, is this DJ committed to me and my and my uh, whoever it's going to be, future spouse, and making sure that our event is going to be a success? Are they committed to the same values that I have? That's what people really, really want. And this is a huge secret. I mean, this is probably worth the price of the entire course, which is can you position yourself as the guide? Because all of the other DJs, I guarantee this, in your area are probably putting themselves up on stilts and acting super professional and acting like they are the hero in the story. And here's the reality check. They are not the couple getting married and their milestone in their life, that is the purpose of this story. And you play one simple role is to show up and say, I'm here to help and I'm here to contribute to making this an amazing event. And that position, that last P of the business is the one that everybody else, they forget about. And they're missing sales. They're missing connection. They're missing all these benefits that we're talking about. So we're building that into the system here. I mean, the fact that we're talking about DJing and marketing within the same course makes this a very unique course. Not everybody is going to go into depth about how to create a website that is going to appeal to the customer in their journey, that's going to that's going to appeal to the, uh, the couples that want to hire you. So we'll talk about that later in the marketing and sales. I cannot wait to get to that because positioning yourself is such an important piece. Uh, it really is. And a lot of people leave it out or they just forget about it. But honestly, it's an essential part of the system. And without it, you might have success for a little while, but you're not going to get that success on repeat that we talk so much about. So it's all about the couple and it's all about working on the business, not just in the business. So just in closing, and I already said closing like 10 minutes ago, but we're going to go with it anyway. Uh, What is the big picture? Why are you doing this? A friend of mine, not really a friend, but I like to call him a friend anyway. His wife says, we lose our way when we lose our why. We lose our way. Where are we going when we lose our why? Why did we get into this in the first place? So you need to know your purpose. You need to know your why. What is driving you behind this? If it's income, that's not a bad thing. If you want more income, that's fine. But ne- next, ask, ask the why question again. This fi- yeah, have, you ever, have you ever done the five why thing? Five different whys? So the first why is why are you doing it? You're like, okay, I need money. Okay, well, why do you want the money? Well, I want to you know, have more money in my bank account because I don't have a lot right now. Okay, well, what are you going to do once you have it? Like, why do you want it? Well, I want to be able to go on vacation to Disney World. Well, why do you want to go to Disney World? Well, because I haven't been able to have spend time with my family in a long time and I need the money to be able to do so. Well, why do you want to spend time with your family? Well, because I love them so much and I want to be able to serve them and I want to be able to create memories and experiences with them. You see how powerful that can be? When you know that you are walking into that DJ event or you are walking into that meeting or you're writing that email because it's going to lead to you spending more time and having more experiences with your family. It will give you the drive and the energy and the perspective you need to really do a good job there and not feel like you're just cashing out here. So I encourage you to spend some time after you watch this video 
and ponder, meditate on why are you doing this? And it might come to you when you're driving in the car one day or it might come to you when you're just thinking, uh, you know, talking to somebody else. But really think about what you could do with the possibilities of this business and allow that to drive yourself through these lessons. Allow that to, to continue to drive yourself through your business and through everything that you do so that you don't lose perspective of why you're doing it in the first place. And then what's your client's big picture? Why are they hiring you? You know, we talked about this in positioning yourself as the guide, but it is not about you. It's all about the couple. They need a DJ. They're getting married. They have lots of plans. They have lots of stress, and they need somebody who can show up and make it happen. Ultimately, they don't care what brand of speakers you have. They don't care where you bought your music, although you and I need to talk a lot about that stuff. They care about can you deliver and follow through on the result that they need, which is a job well done at the end of the wedding day. And if you're focused on that, if you're focused on the couple's end goal, you're going to be, again, one leg up on all the other guys because they're too worried about talking about how they are the best DJ ever and how they're, how expensive their equipment is and how it's state of the art and all of that stuff. The couple doesn't care. The couple wants to know that you are for them that you are for them, that you're on their team, and that you're playing a supporting role, that you're not going to try to be the star of their show on their day. You're their solution. You're going to guide them through the process. You're going to be calm. You're going to be solution-oriented to try to find things that solve their problems for them. And they're probably only going to get married once again. So you have the opportunity to make this good and to get it right. So this is the success system. We, we've talked about a lot of different things in this lesson, and I it's kind of like motivational speaking almost. Like I want you to be thinking about the big picture before we get into all the nitty-gritty. And if you're ever feeling discouraged along the way, I want you to come back, listen to this lesson again, think about the big picture again, think about your why. And if you need help walking through that, we might do a webinar, we might do uh, an interactive you know, coaching call or something where we can talk about how to identify that for you. Because if you're feeling any kind of resistance or you're feeling like you're not getting the traction that you need to get, this is probably watch this lesson one more time and think over these things one more time. I know it's going to be valuable to you. Well, I'll see you in the next lesson where we're going to go into depth about the couple's journey, where we're going to talk in detail about the point in their journey that you show up as the guide and how the entire process works. I'll see you in the next lesson.